Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're going to be checking out the new He Man and the Masters of the Universe Castle Grey Skull playset as it's based on in the new Netflix animated series. Yeah, I kind of can't believe we got a full playset out of this line, but honestly, this line has given us a lot more than I ever expected, and it's been pretty fun. So how does this Castle Grayskull measure up to previous versions and how is it as a toy on its own? Well, we're gonna take a look at it here today. Let's go and start by taking a look at the box it comes in. Honestly, this thing is much bigger than I expected and I think it's much bigger than a lot of you probably expected it to be as well, just based on the few images we saw online. The box is massive and it's also very heavy. It's quite a bit bigger than the Origins Castle Grayskull box. Um, and I do really like the box because while it's still styled like the packaging in the rest of this particular line, the artwork on the box certainly evokes that feeling of what the vintage Castle Grayskull and a lot of the old He-Man boxes did because there is some nice artwork on there. Of course, it is the style of the characters from the new cartoon and it's very bright and colorful, but it is artwork and it's really cool just kind of seeing all these characters doing battle around Castle Grayskull. Now, when you open up this box, you'll see that the entire thing is broken down into several pieces. There is an included instruction manual and it's gonna walk you through step by step. And it looks overwhelming because there's so many pieces, but it's very easy to assemble, let me assure you. There is one small sticker label sheet and there's not a whole lot of labels. So put the labels on before you assemble the castle pieces that will make it much easier. In fact, the instructions tell you to do that as well. And then everything just kind of clips together real easy. Just follow those instructions. It probably took me 15 minutes tops to get this thing completely assembled. So it's really not as bad as it looks. And once you get it all put together, this right here is what you end up with. This is quite a beast of a playset. Uh, the entire thing stands about 18 inches tall. It's about uh, 18, 19 inches wide, but there's some pieces that extend out once you open it up, making this thing well over 26 inches wide, closing in on 30 inches wide. So this takes up a lot of space. It's a really big playset. And honestly, uh, one of the things that's kind of cool about this is this is the first time that we've had a Castle Grayskull playset that like includes walls basically all the way around. I guess the back here is opened up still. Um, but you know, most of the time Castle Grayskull has always been presented as like a opening sort of clamshell thing um, where you don't have like a full 3D Castle Grayskull and here we do, it's kind of neat. Um, the overall design of this is pretty cool as well. If you've watched the animated series, you know that this version of Castle Grayskull kind of also acts as a spaceship and it flies around and it moves a lot. So that is captured here, I think, um, with the overall structure sitting on these kind of curled white bone structures here. So it's up off of the ground. It's a really interesting design and it definitely does have a bit of a overall sci-fi element to it. Uh, it's hefty. Um, so kids probably will have a hard time carrying this around if they want to, especially the younger kids. There's quite a bit of weight here, uh, but I will say the entire thing feels sturdy. Like this is a hefty, sturdy playset. Some of the pieces uh, are that lighter hollow plastic, like specifically all these kind of like little spires coming off here. Uh, but overall, this has got a lot of heft to it, a lot of weight to it, and I really like that. Um, they definitely worked a lot more of the classic Castle Grayskull green into the playset. The one in the series really doesn't have that greenish look to it, um, but I am kind of glad that they worked that into the toy here because this really does make it still feel like Castle Grayskull. Like you look at this and you go, yeah, that's Castle Grayskull, right? I mean, everything that makes Grayskull what it is is pretty much seen in this toy. It's just a little bit more stylized and modeled after what we see in this new series. And there's a lot of cool things going on here, a lot of fun action features that we will definitely be getting into.
So there's a lot of really cool features with this thing that we're gonna start diving into right now. I wanna start by mentioning that this does come with He-Man's Power Sword. Now the sword itself is designed exactly the same as the one that comes with your He-Man figures. Um, so if you've already got a He-Man, you've already got the sword. I thought it was interesting that it came with one, but I, I guess it did that because it's uh, actual key to a few of the action features on here. Um, so it really doesn't differ too much from the one with your He-Man figure. I think the colors are slightly different from each other, but otherwise it's the exact same sword. And I want to start by showing you guys some of these lights and sounds features. Now it is worth noting that this takes three AA batteries, which plug into the top up here. So you have to screw open the top, put your AA batteries in, and then there is a power switch on the back of the castle to turn it on. You got a couple buttons up here that do some different sounds that I'm going to show you, but I want to start with the literal key to Castle Grayskull, which is an amazing homage to the vintage Castle Grayskull on the original story that you needed the power sword to gain access. So there's a little slot right here in front of the jaw bridge on the front. And if you take He-Man's power sword, plug it in and press, you get this feature. I love it. I love how it just slowly folds down the jaw bridge and then it pops open and extends. Super fun feature. And of course, this is easy to close. You just kind of fold it back up and then the jaw part folds down. Boom, clips back in place. And then, hey, we can do it again. Oh, boom, 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 boom. Anytime, anytime, anytime. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh! <laughs> It's just a really fun feature. Uh, that's honestly my favorite thing about this. I think that is really cool. So once this is all opened up, you can see it's kind of like hollowed out through the back. Um, you know, uh, there's a big opening in the back of it for inside of the castle play, uh, very similar to the original one where you would open up and it would just be a big open space in the back. Um, so there's not a whole lot going on on the inside. Most of the features are with the outside here. Um, and that's gonna bring us up here to the top of Castle Grayskull, uh, where we've got another really cool lights and sounds feature up here that utilizes the sword. So I've got He-Man standing up here on the top. There are some foot pegs up there as well, so you can plug the figures in if you want. If you take the power sword and you plug it into this button right in the center, and then we press this down, That's sort of like our I have the power pose. Now, of course, the sword is here instead of in He-Man's hand, but it does have this really cool lightning effect that comes up around He-Man. And of course, you can still do it where like if you want, just put the sword in He-Man's hand and uh, we just press this back down to lock it in place. And then you can just press the button as well. You don't actually need the sword to trigger that. The sword is just a fun way to trigger it. You can just press the button and it does the same thing. Lights, sounds, lightning effect, pretty cool. I think this is the first time we've ever had a toy that tries to mimic the lightning, I have the power thing. I think that's pretty cool. It's worth mentioning that it's also appearing down inside the castle there. So you can also put He-Man on the inside of the castle here. And then the same thing, look, it's lighting up on the inside. You can see the lightning bolts themselves are actually glowing on the inside of the castle, wrapping around He-Man. So it's pretty neat. I think that is a lot of fun. All right, so I'm gonna start showing you guys some of the other features here around the castle. Down in the front, you'll notice that we've got these two turrets. Um, and of course you can put any of your figures inside. They handle swivel so that they can grasp onto those. Uh, so that way any of the size figures should be able to hold on to the handles on the gun turrets there. Uh, but these gun turrets are also removable. They just pop off of those bony structures and now they are their own little ships that can fly around as security for the castle. And yes, they do have rocket firing missiles by pressing the button on the front. You can blast missiles at the intruders to Castle Grayskull. Both of those come off. They're actually very sturdy and hefty. I think they're cool. Um, there's just a little hole on the bottom where you just press down on the bone structures and it just clips them right back in place. So now you've got these little turrets on the front of the castle. Of course, lots of places to stand figures up here. The towers, um, you know, just have spots where the figures can stand if you want to. And uh, then we get to some of the other fold-out features with the castle. 
So the sides of this thing do open up and it expands outward if that's something that you wanna do. And all you gotta do to do that is you just grab onto these kind of curled spires on the side and you fold them down and it does that on both sides here, so as you can see. And then you also can pull these panels outwards which is what extends this castle into a much wider display. From here, you've got some little pieces to fold up. Like over on this side, you have a fold up weapons rack. And this is a really nice nod to the vintage Castle Grayskull, of course, always including a weapons rack. Um, it does include three bonus weapons on here. Um, two of them are just molded in the same gray color as the rack itself. And then one of them is an ax that's molded in a gold plastic. So there's not a lot of extra paint detail here, but again, Again, that's kind of reminiscent of the vintage weapons rack, right? So all three of these weapons can plug onto this weapons rack. And it is worth noting that the pegs on the back are the same size peg that's on the power sword itself, which means all of these can also plug onto He-Man's back if you want to. But it also means that you can plug the power sword onto the weapons rack if that's something that you choose to do. Now, they all have to point upwards because the rack is sitting so low to the ground that the blades will run into the ground. It won't work that well. So, But it's still kind of cool that you got a weapons rack with some additional weapons included. On the ground there is a worked-in dungeon grate, which is kind of a fun nod to the vintage as well. It doesn't lead to anywhere. You don't have a cool sticker with creatures coming out of it, but there is a dungeon grate there. In fact, this... Um, sits over kind of a compartment. As we slide this out, it reveals a little compartment. It's worth noting that that compartment is not big enough to hold a figure inside of it. So it really isn't a dungeon that the figures store in. The, ex um, the instructions show this as a place to store accessories. So weapons from your figures and everything can be put in there. And I guess that is good because that is a way to use this uh, playset also as storage for a kid's figures if they want to do that. Same kind of thing on the other side. It expands outwards. It's got the same storage space underneath. But on this side, we have a fold-up computer screen. And again, another nod to the vintage Castle Grayskull, where we had a computer screen on the inside there. Um, so you can have man-at-arms or whoever toiling away at the controls of this new Castle Grayskull. So there are some other buttons up here on the top of the playset that trigger different sounds. So I'll give you a sampling of those. The button over here on my right uh, triggers like electronic sounds for our spaceshipy Castle Grayskull. Sounds almost like it's preparing to take off with that one. We got beeps and boops. Very, very R2. <laughs> But you can see it triggers lights and sounds, pretty fun. And then the other button over here on my left does a lot of battle noises. Light up eyes, swords clashing. Beast man snarl, which is pretty cool. And then we're getting close to my favorite. Skeletor's laughing. I love it. It is so incredibly cool. So lots of fun lights and sounds that trigger the lights in the eyes on the front of Castle Grayskull there. Uh, definitely, definitely fun. We haven't had lights and sounds in a Castle Grayskull since the 2002 one. I think one of the things I kind of was a little let down by uh, specifically ties into the way it works with some of the other vehicles that have been released. And I'm specifically talking about the Talon Fighter. Um, so the Talon Fighter came out not that long ago and it has peg holes in the bird feet on the bottom. So I was kind of hoping that that meant that similar to the vintage, they would have a perch or a place for these to plug onto with this. Uh, but that is not the case. There are no peg holes up here for this to sit on. I mean, you can stand it on the top of the castle still, and that looks kind of neat, uh, but it is worth noting that it, it just kind of rests on the top there. So it doesn't actually plug into it. I think it would have been neat if that was like a little extra thing that was included, maybe even removable, if there was like a perch that you could put up here so that we could plug the Talon Fighter on top, just to give it another homage to the vintage Castle Grayskull. 
So that's going to bring us to the back side of the castle. And once you've got the side walls folded down and you've got the back wide open and you've got the jaw bridge open, I mean, you can see it's a big open area. So it's real easy for kids to reach inside and play. You've got a much bigger play space essentially for everything. There's some fun details on the inside. Specifically, I love how on either side of the jaw bridge door, uh, there are labels in there that show the big mural painting that is a big deal in the show where it shows all of the heroic warriors facing off against their nemesis nemeses <laughs> um i love that that's in there i think that's really cool and it's a great label on the back side you can see down at the bottom this is supposed to be like a cage like a big lightning cage down here and uh, some of those lights and sounds on there are also going to trigger some lighting effects on there uh, but let me bring you back up to the top of the castle first because we got this great tailbone piece that's sticking down and this thing you can see drops with a little bit of pressure. Um, and that's supposed to be sort of like our old trap door feature that dropped our, our bad guys down to the dungeon grate, just a little bit different on this one. So if we put Skeletor and He-Man on top of the castle as if they're doing battle, if you bump Skeletor, Boom, he will fall onto that, which will drop out underneath him, and it drops him down to the cage down below. And again, you can press the buttons on there, and you'll have light flashing through that cage on the bottom as if he's trapped in sort of like an electric cage. It's fun, it's satisfying, it's pretty cool. And here's something else. That lightning effect I showed you at the beginning, that's like the I have the power thing, you can also kind of treat it like it's designed to protect the power sword. For example, if you put Skeletor up there and the sword's plugged in as if Skeletor's trying to get to the sword, but you press that down, the lightning shoots up around it as if it's blocking the power sword. And you might even be able to stand him up there just right where it bumps him and knocks him down. You could even get him bumped back onto that dropping platform. Now, look, I did this a whole bunch and it took a while to get it right, but I eventually got it. I thought it was a lot of fun. So there's different ways that I think kids can play around with that to trigger the different mechanisms to spring some of the traps there. All right, guys, it's comparison time. You know, we've got to do this. I'm going to go ahead and stand to this brand new Castle Grayskull alongside the one that started it all, the 1982 Castle Grayskull, just to give you guys an idea of what the scale looks like with the older one there, as well as the overall style. And we'll go ahead and stand it alongside the 2002 version of Castle Grayskull. I really feel like this new series has a lot of 2002 elements to it. So it is interesting looking at these two standing side by side. And we got to put it alongside the Masters of the Universe Classics Castle Grayskull. That behemoth from the collector line there. And finally, we're going to stand it alongside the Masters of the Universe Origins Castle Grayskull so that you can see these standing side by side. And on that note, it is worth mentioning that this new line is in the same scale as Origins, so your Origins figures will work with this playset if you want to display them in here or if you want to get this for your Origins figures or if your kids have Origins figures and you want to get them this playset. Um, I just used a couple of them that I had in my studio here, so it's a weird assortment, but it shows you that this does function with the Origins toy line. So there you go, my friends. That is a look at the brand new He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskull playset from the new animated series. All in all, I find this to be a really fun toy. Uh, so this thing does retail for around the $100 mark. I got it on Amazon for $99, but it's already dropped to like $89, so keep an eye on it. It's roughly the same price as what we paid for the Origins one. I think when it first went up, it was listed at like $130, and a lot of people I saw complaining about the higher price. The higher price is definitely because of all the lights and sounds and everything that they've worked in here, but again, I got it on Amazon for right around the $100 mark, so keep, an, keep your eyes peeled. You might even find it cheaper uh, than that in some places. And I think it is a really well-designed toy. Um, the lights and sounds are fun. It's a big, hefty, chunky playset that seems sturdy for play. In fact, man, my kids took to this thing instantly and they've been playing with it. I'm going to leave this out for them to continue to play with. I think they're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, but it does display well. 
Also, if you're just a collector that likes Castle Grayskull and is looking for something cool to display in your collection. Overall, I personally think it's a lot of fun. So this is hitting right now. Like I said, Amazon is where I was able to buy mine in stock. So happy hunting, my friends. And until next time.